And welcome, everyone, to another edition of Orlando Magic Pod Squad. Dante Marcatelli, George Galante, and we are pleased to be joined by former NBA player, two-time NBA champion, Zaza Pachulia, 16 seasons in the NBA. And Zaza, it is hard to believe your first season was right here in City Beautiful, 2003 to 2004. Next summer will be 20 years since the year you were drafted. How is that possible, my friend? Time is flying. <laughs> That's all I can say. Time is flying. It's going to be 20 years. Wow, what a journey. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful and grateful for everything that happened, ups and downs, and, you know, definitely made me a better person, and I learned a lot. I experienced a lot, and, you know, I met very, very interesting people uh, throughout my career, and, and uh, you know, everything started with, with, with George, obviously. I remember meeting with, with George uh, as well, my work here, and, uh, you know, I didn't know one single person, and look where we're at now. Uh, you know, my English is way better. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> A lot, lot of things happen, a lot of I mean, good things happen. And uh, I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for the journey. Zaza, how sad is it that I'm right where you left me 20 years ago? I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in the exact same chair. Is that, that, that's not a good thing, right? I should aim higher. Yeah, I know, right? But you know, <laughs> I, I probably you have more gray hair than you used to have, that's for sure. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. You well, didn't give us- me any of these, though. That's okay. No. That's Yeah, well, you're not responsible for any of these. Other people are. <laughs> you know, Zaza, you've had an incredible journey, and we want to get you to tell your story and, and all the accomplishments that you've had on and off the floor. But I think about a 19-year-old coming to this country from Turkey. You were the first Georgian-born player to play in the NBA. I mean, just take us back to that time, right? You're learning a new country. You're learning a new language. How, how much came at you so fast as a 19-year-old? Yeah, it's... Uh... You know, it's pretty challenging to be honest, especially back. We're talking about an era where we didn't have, I mean, internet, you know, and not as popular. And 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 I definitely we didn't have a social media. So I didn't know one single person as you as you mentioned, Dante. I was actually second Georgian. Stepania, Vladimir Stepania was the first Georgian who came in the league. And uh, you know, I, I didn't know anyone. Like, you know, as a 19-year-old coming to this to this country and uh, it, it was pretty, pretty challenging with so many ways. And, and, but, you know, I think that one of the greatest things happened to me to start my journey in the right place, you know, that is a lot of magic. And obviously the, the, the first couple of months was di- difficult because it was during the summer. That's when I signed my contract, obviously. And everybody was, you know, on vacation or, you know, just away from the office, I would say. But, you know, once the season started, once the training team started and I got to meet, you know, all the coaching staff, I got to meet all my teammates and, you know, the front office people and obviously fans, um, you know, interacted with the fans with, you know, different events, etc. Their life became much more easier, much more interesting, right? Because, you know, I hate to be a, a, alone, I guess. I mean, this is my first time. <laughs> and, sure. and, uh, I surround myself, you know, with the good people and, you know, good friends and, you know, go to the, um, go to the war with, uh, with my teammates. So, you know, again, I was, uh, uh, basketball has been my, my life and, you know, to, to be able to play this game with a, with a great teammates, a great friends, it's nothing better than that. So like I say, I, I guess it was first couple of months, but after, after that, once the season started, things, uh, things start, you know, calming down a little bit and, you know, get more interesting. Now, how, that was, this was your first time in America, right? Was coming to Orlando when you got drafted or I, I was trying to remember and I, I couldn't, but I thought that that was your first experience being here. I came, I came to U.S. first time a year before for the pre-draft uh, workouts, and uh, it was a crazy schedule. I literally had uh, eight workouts uh, in, in uh, eight different cities in 10 wow. days. So, yes, it was quite experienced, <laughs> but at the same time, like, uh, it was so busy with, with workouts and travel and rest. I literally couldn't, in, you know, see or get things I wanted to uh, see, you know, so because my focus was all about, you know, the draft and I pulled my name that year because I was only 18 years old and uh, I felt like it was a little bit er- early. I was not ready for this challenge. So I went back to Europe and played in, in Turkey and uh, another year. So it was a great preparation for me and, you know, mentally and physically. And, you know, a year later, in 2003, I, uh, I tried again. So it worked out perfect. You're the 42nd pick in that 2003 draft. You played 59 games for the Magic, and we still consider that one of the biggest mistakes this organization made was letting you go, Zaza, because you showed 
you showed physicality. You showed you were never intimidated. You showed a lot of those 59 games here. What do you remember about that year? And were you kind of disappointed that you, that you didn't get to stay here and, and be you a can part skip of the, If you could skip the 19 game losing streak that year, we yeah, don't right. want to talk about that at all. Like, well, let's act yes. like that never happened. Can we make <laughs> right. that, act like that never happened, Z? Yeah, it was pretty chaotic season. Uh, what I remember, obviously, you know, started with, you know, Doc and John Gabriel being uh, on, on, you know, leading the, uh, the, the pack and, and uh, first Doc was fired and then, then John was fired and, you know, changes within the roster and, you know, obviously it was pretty crazy start for me, you know, so, <laughs> and, uh, it, it, you know, it depends how you look at it. It can be good and it can be bad, right? Um, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot and, uh, but, you know, good thing for me, I was young and I was, my goal was to get better, right. You know, to experience, get, you know, as experience and physically, and, you know, I remember playing against Shaq my first game and you know, Shaq was, you know, dominant back then in the league and the world. And, you know, there was a great message and, you know, like that took that, you know, you know what, if I want to play in this league for a long time, I better get, you know, uh, stronger. So, you know, a lot of good things happened. Uh, you know, it was great that I had a teammates like Joan Howard, where he taught me how, you know, to be a professional, um, even though I've been playing professional basketball for three years. But, you know, I think Juwan showed me all those details and, you know, took to the, you know, different level. One of the things actually uh, I, I remember I used throughout my career, after every game, you know, next morning, he was in the gym, you know, 7, 8 a.m. lifting weights. And I always asked him, Juwan, you played 30 plus minutes and, you know, you must be exhausted, you know, obviously. And uh, why are you in the gym, you know, next day, early morning, lifting weights? And so because the maintenance, because I want to stay in the sleep for a long term. So that definitely helped out or, you know, having, having, um, you know, having Grant Hill as a teammate, even though he didn't play that year. Uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, dedication and love for the game and, and discipline. And, uh, uh, you know, I learned so many things from him. Even Doc, you know, short period of time, um, I remember first couple of games I didn't play. Uh, I wasn't playing at all as a rookie, but I guess that's normal. I was only 19 years old, so <laughs> I, I had a lot of ambitions. And uh, I don't know if it's good or bad, but you know, clearly I just wanted to play, to be honest, to show, showcase myself and show what I could do. But like I say, like, you know, it's, it's a journey. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a, you know, it's a marathon. And th those are one things he, he told me. And he say he told me like, Hey, stay ready. I don't know when I'm going to need you. I, I don't know when I'm going to call your name. I remember these words. And I got home and I was um, talking to him, telling to myself, I said, okay, coaches asked me, coaches asked me to stay ready. How the hell I want to stay ready. <laughs> but, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have necessarily like player development as exists today. You literally have more coaches than, than, than players in every single team. <laughs> yes. And back then we just had, you know, what, four or five coaches. And I was so shy as a rookie, as a 19 year old, to ask them. I say, you know what, guys, I'm used to practicing twice a day because that's what Europeans do. And uh, just one practice is not enough for me. So can you guys come back at night in the gym and work out with me? So I was very shy. And uh, I remember my rookie year hiring, uh, first I was working with TMAX trainer. Um, and uh, that was very helpful, but still, like, I kind of felt bad because, you know, even, even though Tima was great and he actually let me work out with him sometimes, uh, I said, you know what, I want my own trainer that way he's focused totally on me. So I ended up hiring a, a full-time trainer. I think that was the game changer for, for, for my wow. career. Was one of the biggest reasons why I kind of ended in the league for 16 years because, uh, that, you know, that extra work. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, even though I was not getting playing time, I was in the gym even after the game. So, like I said, a lot of great things happened. Forget about 19 or 19 uh, game losing streak. But, you know, for the rookie, for the young player, for any young player, it doesn't matter if it's me or someone else. It's about uh, it's about having the plan, having the goal and, you know, stay on the course, stay disciplined, learn, pick up the good things from your teammates, from your coaching staff. And, and, and enjoy, enjoy this ride, enjoy this journey. That's the biggest thing. Zaza, have you ever, have you That's taken a insight. moment? Yeah, it really is. Have you taken a moment to, now that you're retired, to step back? I mean, you just rattled off Juwan Howard, Grant Hill, Tracy McGrady. We didn't get into Steph Curry. Uh, the number of great legendary players that you played with, did you ever as a 19 year old come into this country think that that was going to happen? I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy, George. And, you know, that's a great question. Like, it's, it's very hard to plan things and, you know, it's just make it happen. Very hard. But it, you know, at least to put yourself in a situation where good things happen, I think that's what everyone should focus on, right? And I believe in, in work ethic. I, I believe in consistency. I believe in, you know, staying in course and, um, you know, being patient because I believe success doesn't come overnight, you know? So um, there you have so many stories where, like, for example, my first playoff experience came uh, of age of 25, for example, right? Uh, my first championship came in age of 33, 34, you know? So, but like I say, you know, to, I, I, I've been working <laughs> 10 plus years to get to the point where I experienced the first playoff game. I, I've been working 20 years to get to the point to win a championship. So success doesn't come overnight. It takes time, but as far as, you know, keep improving and keep getting better and, you know, staying disciplined, staying professional, make the right decisions on and off the court, you're going to get, you're going to earn the luck. And I'm, I'm a huge believer of that. Luck just doesn't come just like that. You got to earn it. And it's, how you earn it, it's about doing the right things. You know, Zaza, it's interesting. You, that's a great breakdown. You, you did stay ready. You got better every year. You kind of had a breakthrough in Atlanta. Your first couple of years in Atlanta, I know, was a big, a big turning point for your NBA career. But you were never, you were never intimidated. You, you always intimidated other players. Where does that come from? You were always physical. You're one of the toughest players in the NBA. Where does that come from? And how did you learn, learn that physicality? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, that's an interesting question, Dante. Like, I think, I think either you have it or you don't. Um, my dad used to be a wrestler. So maybe it came, came, came from my dad and, you know, just like the, with the way I was raised and, you know, wrestling, it requires obviously yes, technique, but, you know, strength is a huge part, right? Sure. And, and loving that the type of uh, approach to the things, like, you know, even just going hard and, you know, playing hard and especially for the big men that I mentioned, uh, there was Shaq was the dominant and besides Shaq, there was so many great uh, the centers. And every team was loaded with centers. I remember, you know, the first couple of years, I had six, seven centers uh, in the team. And I even couldn't get it, like, the practice time, like, on a five-on-five, five, because there's a rookie, you know, better was wow. kicking out from the lineup, right? So <laughs> and, uh, you had to just fight through it. And, you know, it was a fight on the court. It was a fight off the court, right? So, you know, that mentality of the fighting mentality, working hard mentality, that's the only thing would would uh, uh, would get you through it. So I, I definitely developed it throughout the years. But um, you know, obviously, you know, having the good coaches and right coaches, and you know, telling me like, do we expect you to be physical? You know, we expect you to you know to box out and rebound and play the good defense. That it requires the uh, that requires the, the you know strength and and being strong out there, right? And you know, again, going back to Juwan, right, lifting weights and. That experience, I remember that game against the Lakers. I think we ended up, what, I, did we win the game? Because uh, I don't know, we didn't win too many games, but it feels like a, <laughs> I'll it look it up while you're talking here. <laughs> you might yeah, have, you might have. It feels like we won. And the re reason why um, I learned so much from it, right? I mean, selfishly, uh, I mean, like I say, after the game, even though I was exhausted, I played against Shaq, you know, that was such a learning experience for me. I, and that's, I'm going to repeat it. I, I told myself, I said, you know what? That felt amazing. Like, but if I want to stay in this league, I better get strong. Like, you know, she's stronger. Because I remember I came in the league 235 uh, a pound. And, and uh, I finished my career with 275. So 40 pounds wow. was, you know, more, most of it was muscle, muscle uh, weight. <laughs> so uh, for that reason, again, like I say, every moment in my opinion teaches a, a person, you know, what can be done better. And, you know, as far as you're curious, as far as like you're willing to sacrifice and, and keep working and stay consistent, I, I think uh, every moment can teach you something. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned Shaq. Go ahead, George. You have it? Yeah, did they win yeah well, we, we lost both games, but they were there was a two-point loss and a three-point loss. They, both, right they there. both were really, really tight games. And I do remember the home game being extra... Uh, a little extra spicy. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that one. I do remember remind, that one. Remind everybody, Zaza, the, the guys that you played against, the centers that were in the league, and maybe some, you mentioned Shaq already, and you had Juana out on your team, but the, some of the more physical centers that you had to play as a youngster. Well, I definitely remember Yao Ming. 
uh, because he was so tall and like I looked like a kid next to him. And, uh, you know, he has such a great touch. He could shoot from outside and it was so hard to play against him. I remember Alonzo Mourning. Uh, I remember Dikembe Mutombo. Um, yes. I definitely remember uh, Jamal Maglore because he was one of the most physical, physical guys. I, I remember KG. I mean, so many great names. Gosh, it's right. it's right. That's Look at that. That's why I love this game, to be honest. Like, you know, just having the battles against the best in the world and, you know, the, those memories definitely, it's it's priceless. You had so some- do you like that? Do you like that? Do you like that the game's changed a little bit and it's the centers are shooting threes? Or do you miss centers beating the heck out of each other? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Um, you know, obviously, understanding the business side of it, uh, understanding you know more importance to how to adapt to this new reality, and you know, um, the what the fans are, uh, you know want to see, etc. So I respect it, and of course, it, it, you know, I look at it a way where uh, you know it's not the same over and over. Like you know, so, you know, it's a creation, it's inspiration, right? For example, there we we we're talking about there are a couple of people, a couple of players change this game. And, and talking about center shooting and big man shooting, my good friend Dirk Nowitzki definitely, um, you know, is, is the person who changed the approach of the you know, big man being able to shoot from outside. And looking at now, like today's, today's game, like literally all five men are shooting, be able to shoot the you know, ball. So then it brings us to like, how can you adapt to this? Like Brook Lopez is a perfect example, for example, when yes. he came in the league, it was all about like turn five. It was like all post out for the group. And I remember, you know, he liked to go to his uh, uh, to his left shoulder, shoulder, and you know, scouting him. And he was all about inside in presence. And then suddenly, we started seeing the Brook Lopez, where most of his shots were coming from threes. Believe it or not, he would not go inside. He was all pick and pop, and he was all about you know getting threes out there. So. Like I say, I respect those kind of players where they were able to adjust. And I think that's why Brook Lopez is still in, in the league, even though he's injured and he's still in the league because he was able. So it kind of like on the whatever you learn on the court, Dante, it's uh, it's so true of the court as well. Like, you know, for example, we're dealing with this pandemic, how you can adapt to this new reality. So if you're gonna be quick, then you can get out of this mess, you know, the sooner <laughs> than you know the later. But if you're not able to adapt to the new reality, then you're going to struggle. You're going to have a hard time. So, like I said, this, this life is in this world that you want to throw the you know, cold balls and it's about making the right decisions, being able to be creative and, you know, uh, to adapt to this new reality. So how, how have you adapted to your new reality, Zaza? You're no longer a player. Now you're, yeah. you're in the front. Of, you're, you're a suit now. You're like Dante and me. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that, right. That's right. That, how, how, have you been, how have you been adapting to that? And how, how much have you learned? And, and all, all of that. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm in the Bay Area. I live in Bay, so that's why I got a hoodie on. That's uh, that's another uh, <laughs> chilly out there. To get used to, yeah, it's very calm and mellow here. But uh, I'm, I'm, I love it. First of all, I'm very thankful uh, that it happened. I'm not sad if it, it was over. I'm very thankful that that 16 year career happened. So many good things. Uh, a lot of wins, a lot of losses, two championships, as you guys mentioned. Great friends, and that's very, very proud of. I will always say that. You know, basketball is simple. You never know when it's going to end. They're one of the closest. What makes me believe that one of my closest friends, Sean Livingston, what he went through in the second year of his career as an upcoming, uh, you know, future superstar. And then he has such a terrible injury that his career literally was over. Uh, and uh, I give him a lot of credit for coming back and finishing strong. But looking at his career, it can be over any day, and, you know, just don't know when and you know maybe you're gonna have 20 plus careers like Dirk did and like Vince Carter did right but very few so you just can predict as this is the amount of years and games I'm gonna play um uh, so I, I've been thankful I'm, I'm very grateful for for everything that's happened and at the same time understanding is gonna be over at some point so how you can be as ready as possible for this new chapter and this new reality right so it's constant, you know, asking questions to veterans, like I was asking to Juwan, um, you know, constant conversations with, you know, teammates like Andre Vidal and David West. And, you know, those all veterans are very smart guys. You know, conversation with Dirk, even with Dirk, um, you know, what what got him 
through the 20 plus years, you know, so, and then what he wanted to do after that. So, uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully surrounding yourself with the good people, right people, good mentors, and not only basketball side, but, you know, if you have a business uh, interest, may hopefully some successful entrepreneurs, you know, so for that reason, uh, it, that's why it's like you, you always have to be active. You cannot sit at home and just you know relax and just watch the TV. It's constant, you know, conversations. And because this is such a fast pace in this world, right? I mean, this world is going such a fast pace. It's hard to keep up with it, to be honest. So that's why you cannot waste time. You cannot just you know take day off. And um, and um, I've been trying to stay on <laughs> stay stay on, staying on top of this, uh, George. You know, it's it's like I say, it's hard. It's, it's never perfect. It's never perfect, but again, it's about willing to do the, you know, the things. And as an athlete, you already have a formula, right? So what it takes to become successful, right? When how what kind of approach, the mentality, of values are the ones that help you to get to some point. And then it's about you know going through the same process of failing and you know fail forward and learn from it and you know more. And that's been happening, you know, during on the court and that's that's happening right now, even off the court. Without it, I just cannot imagine, uh, you know, uh, achieving the goals and, you know, dreams you have. See, that's my, pro I, I, I like watching TV too much. You figured out my problem. That's why <laughs> that's your I'm problem. sitting around on the couch too much. I got to get off my ass. I got it. I got that's it. Exactly right. That's, that's it. exactly right. What can you, are with Golden State now as a consultant and and you have so many uh, entrepreneur opportunities. You're, you're quite the businessman. I can't tell you how many different cities I've been to. And they said, yeah, Zaza's involved with this. He's involved with this. <laughs> you really, you've done a fantastic it's awesome. job. It's really you've awesome. Made the, you've made the most of all your stops in the NBA. It's very impressive. But what, what they're specifically in Golden State. What can you tell us about Steph and Clay? They, they seem universally loved, which is amazing. That's not the way with every player. But those two seem to have that. Well, what do you appreciate the most about those two? The personality, uh, the, the the fact that they are so authentic, uh, man, the, you know, uh, it's it's so glary, it's so clear, guys. Obviously, you know, we're not even talking about talent, and you know, uh, we talked about how Steph changed the game, how Clay is unique with his, you know, game. Yeah, basketball is great. I uh, don't get me wrong, it's 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 amazing, but uh, you can be heck of a player, but if you're not, if your personality not as good, not good. If you don't treat people right, you know, entering in the arena, you have so many security guys, guards over there, and, you know, ushers and, you know, ball boys. I mean, we're not even talking about coaching or teammates. Like, like these guys that, that don't get appreciated as much and acknowledged yes. as much. Like, starting from there, those both guys are treating those guys so well. And that already tells me what kind of people they are, you know. So I was lucky to play, you know, the, with them for two years. And, you know, that was the first thing I was learning. Uh, how authentic were they were and they are and uh, how great human beings they are and they are who they are you know and, and uh, you know you you really appreciate that uh the characteristic and values that both guys have so and then obviously they translate to on you know on the court and you know mm -hmm. what what they can do and they're amazing um you know best shooters in the world and you know, Steph obviously proved it, and Clay still holds the most threes made in you know per game. I believe it's fourteen. So, and uh, I remember that game in Chicago when when Clay broke the record. Uh, it was uh, you know I think Steph was more excited than anyone else because Clay broke Steph's record. Uh, you know, so right. I think Steph had thirteen, and you know you know Clay got fourteen in that game, and. So you see, the, you pay attention to those kind of details, guys. Like that, that's the game. That's the difference between average to the best. You know, even on the court, you know, or off the court, doesn't matter. The small details make the difference. So those guys are just, you know, that to me, that's why they're amazing. Well, you perfected that with the small detail. Last thing we're going to ask you, and then, and then we'll let you go. This has been awesome catching up, by the way. Here in Orlando, we remember when you started here. Magic fans remember those those battles with you and Dwight Howard. They remember those, especially in the playoffs when they play the Superman video and they'd say, kneel before Zaza. <laughs> I mean, it was great. <laughs> Dwight did not like playing against you. You were very physical with Dwight. What do you remember about who, well, hold guys. on. Who liked playing well, against Zaza? Well, that's true. There's <laughs> nobody that point. liked playing against Zaza. No, nobody did. <laughs> that, that's the best compliment I can get. <laughs> of course, I don't want my opponents to like against me. Are you that's kidding exactly me? That's exactly right. That's um, right. 
but uh, you know, it was it, it was different. It was special playing against Orlando because, like I say, I'm a very loyal guy, and you know, it's like I was in I was in the same team, one team in Turkey for six years, and as you guys noticed. Um, if I if I was not traded from Orlando or you know let go, um, you know probably I wanted to stay in the same place even like uh, in NBA and looking at my career out of 16, eight years like half of my career I spent in Atlanta Hawks in the same right. team, right? So you, you that's, that's just my mentality. I, like it's not about being in comfort zone; it's about being loyal and trying to keep getting better and better every single year, but do something good in a, for the community. Because like when, when you look at it, it's very hard to make the things happen in one year, right? So it takes some time to you know build the relationship and love uh, with with the fans, with the communities, you know, with the local communities. So especially you as being uh, you know new country for us for me and now my family it's going to take some time until you you know create your ecosystem and you know uh, meet with the fans of france and etc so um uh, you know playing against orlando in the white you know when i was let go it was kind of personal uh, and i would admit it, it was personal i wanted to you know make make a organization feel like you know that was wrong or you you know for them to let me go but same time, I was very happy to be an organization that wanted me the most. And, you know, it, it was in either Milwaukee Bucks or then for eight years, Atlanta Hawks. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think I think every player has that. If you don't, there's a problem, in my opinion. Yes. But it's not that you're pissed. It's about, like, sending the message, basically. But bottom line, like I say, I was very happy. Um, I loved Atlanta. I stayed there for eight years. And, you know, I... I was hoping to return back after the retirement, after my career was over, because that became my home. And three of my kids out of four were born uh, and raised in Atlanta. You know, so there's a special love, uh, uh, you know, with that city. But you're never gonna forget where everything started from, and that's why Orlando is so special, uh, you know, for me. And seeing Doc, and you know, I saw John Gabriel a couple of years ago, and. You know, even you know, Ronnie Powell, uh, the seed, you know, oh, legendary. Yeah. Um, I still talk to him just at a birthday. I wish him a happy birthday. You know, yeah. with with George as well. It's always good to uh, see him as well. And you know, so great memories because, like I say, it's very very important how you start because it's kind of you know guide you throughout the, the you know the career because if you have a bad start, if you have a you know rough memories, then it's it's hard to as a young man to gather yourself and, you know, I say, you know what, that's, that's not what I expect and we need to make the changes, you know, so that's why I'm so thankful organization. You know what, this tells me like that you guys reach out to me that you guys want to do an interview. Uh, it's another proof that how a great organization uh, the Orlando Magic has and not to forgetting the exploits, even though I only played for one game, one year, it's only 59 games, I believe, or average right. 11 games, games probably. Yep. Right, I mean, there's there's nothing, right? You, know, you guys have seen so many great players uh, throughout these 20 years, but you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for for the call and you know for the invite and you know for bringing me back and bringing me back memories. Actually, great memories I have. Well, thank you for sharing them with us, Zaza, and it shows the impact that you made almost 20 years ago. You know, you always treated us fairly, you always treated us well, and. And George didn't ruin your your thoughts of America, which is great. And, <laughs> and you, you always had such an impact. And we, everybody here cheered for you well after that first year. So we're happy for you and all your success. And we hope you'll come visit us anytime soon. Thank you, Dante. Great right. talking to you. Happy New Year, everyone. And uh, best of luck. Same to you, Zaza. Take care. That'll do it for this edition of Magic Pod Squad. We'll see you next time.